As President Obama prepares to sign the health care bill into law, some Republican lawmakers are already promising to repeal it. My next guest argues that the bill will adversely affect doctor-patient relationships and cripple medical in uh, innovation. Joining us now from our Washington, D.C. Bureau is uh, Greg Conco. He is a senior fellow at the Competitive Enterprise Institute. Greg, thanks for joining us. Um, let me just give you a chance to, to tell us your biggest concern here. I mean, uh, is it the doctor-patient relationship or is it the innovation that you're concerned about most? It's a little, it's a little of both, and thanks for having me on the program today. I, I think the major problems arise from uh, government uh, subsidizing uh, a lot more insurance. Already government spends about half of the health care dollars uh, spent in America every year on things like Medicare, Medicaid, the S-CHIP program, and a few others. Uh, but historically, most of the private sector health insurance has been uh, totally uh, unsubsidized by federal or state governments. Now that you see the federal government getting into the act of subsidizing uh, and controlling exactly what benefits are in private health insurance packages, I think you're going to see a lot more government control over which patients get access to which treatments and how much uh, insurers and the government is going to be willing to pay for those things. Uh, these are uh, uh, linked, but, um, but I think in the near term it, it could result in, in patients, uh, particularly in end-of-life situations, uh, perhaps not getting everything, uh, all the best care that they might be, uh, have access to now. Uh, and down the road, if uh, government starts paying less for a lot of innovative medical treatments, we're going to see a lot fewer of them. You know, Greg, it sounds like you don't like this. I mean, is there anything in this legislation that you do like? What about those 32 million who weren't covered that are now covered? I mean, isn't that a good thing? Well, certainly there are a number of uh, Americans who find it difficult to either afford or to get access to meaningful health care coverage right now. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of the 30 million who are likely to be covered under this program are people who already could have access even currently. Uh, there are close to 10 million uninsured Americans who already are eligible for Medicaid coverage but who have not yet enrolled. Uh, similarly, there are about uh, 9 uh, million Americans who make $50,000 a year uh, or more uh, but who have chosen voluntarily not to purchase health insurance because they tend to be young professionals who don't see much value in it. So most of the people who are going to be covered uh, are people who right now could have health uh, access to health care and uh, and just choose not to have it. And, and actually, you know, in the last census, uh, about nine million who make more than seventy five thousand dollars a year don't have health insurance. But, Greg, how would you deal with it? I mean, surely you don't want to leave them uninsured because it just drives up the cost for the rest of us when they go to emergency rooms. Plus, you want to in the uh, world's most successful country, I guess, uh, insure as many people as possible uh, for for basic health care. How do you do that without uh, hurting the innovation? that you're concerned about? Uh, well, when it comes to uh, people with, uh, say, the people who are eligible for Medicaid but who have chosen not to enroll, uh, I think we need to make uh, reduce some of the administrative hurdles and uh, make it a little easier for them to get into the Medicare programs, or excuse me, Medicaid programs. Um, right now, some of the administrative hurdles are, are a bit much. Um, but uh, there are also a lot of ways under the current system to game the uh, uh, federal health programs or the, or the private health care system. Uh, so it just makes sense for people to go uncovered. Uh, I, I have no sympathy for someone who could have access to a health care program, but who's chosen to, uh, to push costs off, uh, off on the rest of us, uh, not being uh, able to get access to uh, expensive health services when, when push comes to shove. Uh, I think the important thing is that there are a, a, a fairly small number, a few million to be sure, but a fairly small number of people who are truly have, acts, uh, have uh, difficulty getting access to private health insurance, uh, perhaps because they make too much money to qualify for Medicaid, uh, but not enough to, uh, to, to pay the uh, very high health insurance premiums if they've got uh, pre-existing conditions. And I think a smaller, narrower health care package that's tailored to getting those people better access to health insurance, perhaps subsidizing a smaller set of the uninsured are things that uh, we could have done that would have saved a tremendous amount of money uh, and, uh, and solved our problem without complicating matters in, in the private market. All right. Hey, Greg, thanks for joining us. Greg Conco there of the Competitive Enterprise Institute. We're going to take a quick break here. On Blue